Alright, welcome to another review. <sighs> Guess what it is? It's Valkyria Chronicles. Bloody hell, these headphones make everything really loud. Um, um, Alright, so. Uh, this is Valkyria Chronicles. Uh, the, basically, the way it works is... So I've got to try and remember the way controls up this game. Oh my gosh. Du -du. Du -du. <laughs> the way it works is relatively simple. Um... It, <clears throat> it works off of the, it's kind of a storybook, so to say, as you see as I'm flicking back through the pages. <coughs> I haven't completed this game, should be made aware, uh, but I, I don't actually know how long this game goes on for, I've never actually reached the ending part. Still there. Still, uh, still, uh, uh, I believe it classes a JRPG. As a, and the story of it is relatively simple. This this thing that's currently highlight highlighted, shall we say, <clears throat> that is Gallia, is a nation, and there are different parts to the story. For example, uh, it's kind of story driven, but there is more to it than just meets the eye. Um, I'm going to the glossary would be a good way to explain it. So, the way this, this game does work, I should probably point out, is it, as I stated, a storybook, but it's not just that. You have different categories that you go through within the, um, within the menu. You can go onto different bits. Uh, episode select is just the story, headquarters, we'll move on to that soon, skirmishes, we'll probably finish with those, uh, but it does have different type of things, uh, we'll actually do this bit a bit later as well, uh, same thing. The glossary is kind of, uh, this provides all the information that you really need to be made aware of. Um, however, so this is Brule, uh, it's basically where the protagonist is originally from. <coughs> Uh, and it's uh, this town is it does actually play a part in the game there are other bits to it um I'm gonna like the capital city uh, and the story of it is I'm trying to think of a way to phrase it World War 2 but different version uh, like you see there are different things, bits and bobs, and all of this stuff comes up as part of the, uh, how to phrase it, as the way things are done, so to say. And you can actually just go through all the stuff. So we'll probably get, uh, I'm trying to find where it says the different, oh there it is, no, not that one, there we go. <clears throat> so this is the, the map. Uh, the blue bit is Gallia, that's where this takes place. The red bit are the bad guys. The white bit are the, hmm, guys, I'll phrase it as. <coughs> as you can kind of tell, it is somewhat influenced by Europe, mainly by the name, Europa. I believe that's Latin, as far as I'm aware, but don't take my word for it. Um... Feel free to read the bit on the right, but I'm not really going to be reading from it. The red part are the bad guys, the white part are the questionable guys, and the blue part are us, the good guys. And you see that there are other nations as well. The Atlantic Federation is the equivalent of the Allies. The East European Imperial is the equivalent of... Well, I'm going to say the Axis, but... Their location would be more 
Axis Soviet non-aggression pact type of time, whereas the Atlantic Federation is just kind of just the Western Allies. It's the best way of putting it. <coughs> there are other nations. Gallia is a coastal nation. I believe it has a navy, but it's not actually shown in this game as far as I'm aware. Um, I would assume there would be other stuff. Um, and it's not like a variety of things. So these are the main baddies. And these are the questionable guys. Each one of them is kind of different. So, And like it is, the first European War, like it is a second world war type of thing. There was a war prior to this one that did do stuff. Uh, you play as the principality of Gallias. Well, you don't play as them. You play as a select squad within them. And you only play as that squad. Well, for the majority of it. Um, these are what I'm going to call the equivalent of the Jews. They are... Kind of... Dis they're discriminated against. Yeah, kind of considered lessers. Compared to the others. Um, but there's variety to it. The way they do their, um, oh, how to put it, the way it's kind of gone down is that you don't play as the, uh, well, your squad is kind of morally right, shall we put it. Now this is Ragnite, it's kind of the reason for the war, uh, as it states the top bit, as Europa's primary energy source, this ore has become vital in daily existence. It's luminous and characteristic blue hue when releasing the energy it contains. <coughs> it luminesces, sorry, not luminesces. Uh, this is kind of the main reason for the war, as opposed to World War II, where the main reason for the war was, in fact, the invasion of Poland. Um, but the, in the more intriguing bit is that you don't play as any of the major powers, you just play as a small little nation, and I believe the war is actually, it, this is during the the war, which was, I believe it was during it, yeah, it's, uh, I'm trying to find this to see if it has a date on it, a short 20 years pause, the empire began an invasion anew, so you see it's, it does have quite a few differences with it. And that's kind of the reason why the Gallian War happened, and the invasion of Gallia. Because you don't actually take part in the Second European War, you're involved in the invasion of Gallia, which is different. Now, Gallia is somewhat meant to be a combination of, na of nations. Um, I believe it's like Belgium and Switzerland somewhat. It's a lot of neutral countries. So, as it says, temperate oceanic climate, which is kind of more like Belgium, but it does have mountains, as far as I'm aware. Uh, it's got hilly plains, whereas Belgium and the Netherlands, they're very flat. Uh, I've never been to Switzerland, but I would assume Switzerland's a bit more hilly, a bit more mountainous, it's got a lot of lakes, as far as I'm aware. Um, and... That pot bit kind of brings out the basis of it. Gallia is a naturally fortified is naturally fortified against invasion, historically allowing it to repel even significant larger foes. So it's it's a very interesting one. Um, the the way it works is that it's hard to put it. It's quite hard to say who Gallia really is, because the history of it doesn't really match Switzerland or Belgium or the Netherlands. And as far as I'm aware, it doesn't really... I can't think of any real name. I could probably... maybe some Eastern Bloc nations? Or maybe Finland? But I don't, I don't really know about the history of them, so I wouldn't say for sure. <clears throat> um, there are different parts to it, like this, the Cloden Wildwood. It's like a big... well... That's a, uh, a big forest. Uh, this is a bridge, you know, and it has things on a lot of different parts. Belgalandio, the desert, and then the, uh, the 
see. This basically turns out to be a concentration camp. Uh, beach. I think this is meant to be somewhat like, uh, like the beaches at Normandy. Although, I um, put my, like, I'm say for sure. Because it's got, like, the gun posts on the cliffs. But it's got the beach that you have to assault from. It's quite an interesting one. This is trench warfare. Um, and there is a lot more to it. Like, it has different factions, I'd say, but this is kind of one of the more relevant facts to it. <clears throat> it's conscription, meaning that people do, like, military training in school. So it says schools of each level offer mandatory military education. And like, if you went to a, I think it said that actually, yeah, universities double as officer training schools and graduates are eligible for the rank of lieutenant upon enlistment. So it doesn't work on the basis of, well, kind of like, he's good at it. If they went to university, they go in as a lieutenant. <clears throat> now, uh, it does have medals. These are just awarded upon, oh, I've got a new one. Oh, wow. Um, these are awarded for doing certain things, like some of these don't really bring out a lot. Uh, I don't know how you get that one. Uh, this is kind of like speed. Uh, these are mission specific, so it's that one. Um, like as you see, there are um, so that one would be a. I think that would be just more enemies killed. I believe that's what they are. Yeah, defeated more in defense of the homeland, the splinter torn, the crimson heart. Order of the Gods. Some of these, it's quite interesting. Um, let me move on to the weaponry. There's a lot of different types of guns. Really? Okay, there we go. Um, and now the interesting thing is with the glossary, you can actually go through and like have a little look at them. So this is the Galleon. Uh, standard, standard bolt action, I believe. Is it bolt action? Uh, standard rifle, blah, 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 blah. Minimize change of the action. Oh no, maybe it's semi-automatic. Interesting. Um, now the, I believe these weapons do have inspiration from actual weapons, but like some, for this bit, it's got the water cooler on it, which is quite an interesting, uh, part of it, I believe it says, yeah, water cooling within the action. Um, I, I feel that's quite a weird thing, actually. Uh, water coolers were used on machine guns, so it's quite a lot of odd bits. The Galleon S is kind of, it's like a... Each one of them does have different facts to it, for example, and they do have different lengths. To be honest, the top of it doesn't really matter. The clip size does, but the rest of it doesn't really. Um, uh, you get the Galleon X. It's quite a weird one. Uh, these are the enemy weapons. The ZM Car, ZM Car B. If you notice, oh, that's, that's the room. That's a very interesting weapon. We'll get into that at a later point. It's an MG34 or an MG42. I believe it's meant to be like an MG34. But it looks good. That's what it reminds me of. Um, the mags, submachine gun. It says military machine gun. It's not a submachine gun. These are kind of more assault rifles. Uh, that's that's kind of more of a submachine gun. Uh, but these are, in a nutshell, just submachine guns. And you can tell that that design is very, very... I feel it reminds me of the STG uh, in the designs of them. And this is more like MP40-ish and then the different variants of it. That is the equivalent of an anti-tank uh, rocket launcher. So as opposed to the Super Bazooka, they use these. It's quite an interesting thing. But you have to remember it is an alternate timeline. Thymar, this is a mortar variant, I believe. A little bit mortar-like, yeah. Enemy weapons. Sniper rifle, it's still a sniper rifle. You can see that the designs do differ, but they do kind of stay the same. That looks like an anti-material rifle, I forgot to mention, just because of that muzzle brick at the end. Um, enemy snipers. That's a uh, underbarrel grenade launcher. Enemy. Flamethrower. Flamethrower. Enemy flamethrower, enemy flamethrower, 
standard just your hand grenades and type of thing. There's a variety of them. The Edelweiss, I believe it's how it's pronounced. Edelweiss or Edelweiss, something like that. Um, this is the, I would say kind of the main, well, it is the main unit within the missions. Uh, there is a reason for it, because this is the command vehicle. This isn't the main unit, but you can have this, and um, it can be acquired. Uh, this is an enemy vehicle, and you can kind of see that these vehicles have very interesting designs. Um, and that, as you can tell, these vehicles do have the same tracks on them. So it's not just they just created loads of random stuff, they did kind of think about it. And they did go into a bit of detail regarding these vehicles. That's kind of a... Uh, it's going to be weird when I say this, but KV-1-ish, or like the KV series of tanks, because they had the machine gun port built into the main turret at the back, whereas this one's got machine gun at the back. It's quite odd. Uh, heavy tank. Oh, tank destroyer. And, uh... See, so you went through all of these. Uh, there are also the personnel. Now, there are a variety of personnel, I'm just going to get rid of these quickly. Uh, I should probably also mention this will have information about characters within it, so spoiler alert. Uh, but this is Welkin, he is the protagonist. You can kind of see. A variety of uniforms. I don't know, I don't get this one. But <laughs> There, there is, this is Japanese, don't forget, so there was, of course, the inevitable beach episode, which, quite funny for a game, but it happens in anime. You can tell it's anime-esque in style, and it's 3D. Uh, but, this is your protagonist, this is who you virtually are the actual person. Um, there is information on the right, feel free to read at your own leisure. But in the gist of it, he is the... Squad leader, commanding officer, I believe. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, tank commander. Well, he's he's kind of the commanding officer of the squad. He's the person in charge. And an officer went to university. He loves nature, I think. She is also a protagonist. Um, she's a sergeant. I don't know how. Oh yeah, well I think I forget. Some of them they do have backgrounds. These characters. It's not just this is character A. This is character B. Um, like his background is nature love, and we'll get into what some of this stuff actually means when it's how each character is unique in a way. Uh, but he is your protagonist. She is a, uh, a scout, but we'll move on to that in a minute. Um, she's basically a protagonist. She's a protagonist. You don't actually play as her. Um, but just be a bit careful. These do have spoilers in them. You don't play as him. But he is relevant to the story. Uh, she is the actual commanding officer of the like the group of not the group, yeah, the combination of all the squads type of thing. Um, there are two different parts to Gallia's military: the militia and the the actual army. Uh, the militia are just the reservists in a nutshell, people who are called upon during times of war, whereas the actual army is just the standing army. Um, <clears throat> He's a somewhat protagonist, um, and some of these characters do have a special factor to them, and then she's also a somewhat protagonist. The reason I say somewhat is because they're not necessary, so to say, um, and I guess you could say he is somewhat. He's relevant to the story as well, like those three are. So is he. He's relevant to the story. Um... And he's just really odd. I've got to admit, though, he has one hell of, like, battle pants, is what I'm going to say. Because of... It, I don't know why they need to be so puffy. Uh, this is a mechanic. So is this. Like, R&D mechanics and stuff like that. It's quite interesting regarding the battle pants. Um, it's a pig. There's, there's reasons for it. That's the, uh, the monarch. Uh, the Prime Minister. Uh, he's the head of the army, I believe. Yeah, Central Gallian Force, including the militia. So he's not the head of the army, but he's like 
highest, one of the higher ranking generals. Um, character, da da da, and then you, yeah, he's quite interesting to be honest. There are a variety of them. The Aged Gentleman is actually quite uh, relevant as well. And this is one of the backstory characters, shall we say. It's the, the father of the protagonist. Um, and then there's also another thing, but we'll get into those in a minute. And... Yeah. Um, he's another backstory character. And then we move into the actual squad characters that go all along to get to uh, this this person actually not this person is a squad character but not in the way that you may be thinking you don't use this character but they can get called in and the way it works is should a soldier fall this person gets called in you'll see them running into battle like emergency emergency medical evacuation type of thing. I don't know how they do it. It's literally just the one person, but who knows? Um, he's the main antagonist and one of the coolest antagonists. Uh, not just by the way he dresses. He's a prince, but there are there's quite interesting facts to them. A general, um, another enemy general, and another enemy general, and another enemy captain. He's Federation, and then that's about it. There, there are other parts to it, but that's quite a lot of story, I think. Um, well, I guess we'll move on to... Well, the episode select is the story bit. Uh, skirmishes, I'll just go over this quickly. The way skirmishes work are, they're not story relevant, but you can do things in them that affect the story. And why that? What I mean is, if a soldier dies in a skirmish, you can't use them. Um, if they get wounded in a skirmish and you pull them out, you can still use them. But if they actually die, die, uh, then you, you lost them. So you can't use them. And it's kind of when they're dead, they're dead. In fact, it's of it. Uh, but this is the headquarters. This is kind of where you spend most of the time during the game. So this is a lot to it. The audience hall is the medals part. So. Thing. And sometimes when you go there, you'll require other weapons, so to say. Um, the War Cemetery is where you'll go to learn new orders. So, um, he hasn't got anything to teach. But sometimes when you go over, he'll go, oh yeah, you can learn this. Uh, the audience hall, you go over and you receive like medals, although you'll already be given a medal, but if you go there, you can receive uh, special weapons. This is where you can acquire, uh, where you kind of read up about things. So you get all of these, and then you just read them. And then you can get some of these special articles that you can buy. And some of them will just... Like, uh, Come back. some of them will just have a bit of story thing, just loads of cutscenes. There are a lot of cutscenes in this, by the way. Um, but some of them provide actual missions to do, and you do. It's fun to do missions. Well, Ken Fro, I'm stoked you're here, man. What can I do you for? It's quite an interesting character. It's just like, bro. Now there are there are a variety of them. Uh, when you get weapons, they start off just one line. Same thing applies to machine guns, and then the rocket launchers, and this the well, lances, and the uh, sniper rifles. Um, but as you see, like the grenades, there's only one. Like go down, <laughs> very simple. Um, the same thing applies to arm, uh, uniform, and blast suits. Now these do have effects. For example, the uniform. Like, this is combat suit. These are worn by most soldiers. Blast suits are worn by lancers. Uh, but these are where the, snipe, the rifles go down. And you, they actually do differ. So, for example, this is the standard. The Galleon 4. But then we go to the Galleon A1, where it's kind of more focused on damage. The Galleon S1, which is more focused on, like, 
range, and then the Galleon X one, which has a special effect. So, <clears throat> as you see, with the... Oh wow, I must be near the end of the game. Um, with the X12, the aim is deep, which is bad. In a nutshell, it's not particularly good. It has a defense bone effect on it, which means that anybody who gets hit by it has reduced defense. So though it does little damage, it's very good for supporting. But then you get like the Galleon A12, which is better suited for doing damage to enemies. And it you can do damage to armor, but that's we'll get into that a bit later. It has 12 shots uh, as well, so it has an increased magazine over the standard. <laughs> the uh, if you see the range does actually go up over time. So but this is mainly a damage weapon, and the aim is C, which means it's... I'd say C is moderate. Then you get the Galleon S12, which is your accurate one. It's kind of the equivalent of, like, the sniper if ish You have to take, kind of bear with me when I say that. <coughs> As you see, the weapons do actually change over time. So these actually got... Like, it went from this, and then you got the blue bit underneath, and then... These. So they just change. <laughs> Or massive change. Um, so what these are, they're more accurate, and this is kind of your more accurate weapon. But as you see, it goes better aim along with better damage, and then better damage and then better range. Whereas this was better damage, but no aim increase. But it does a lot more damage in comparison. So you get your machine guns, which are basically submachine guns. Um, this one is the special effect one. It does like a bit of an effect on it. So it reduces the enemy's attack if hit by it. Um, it's got poor aim, little damage. And then you get this one, which is still got poor aim. Uh, but like the range is better and it does more damage. Um, and, like It's got 20 shots, it's got 15. <clears throat> and then you get... Um, the uh, T Mag, so you get the Mag M21, the Mags, uh, Mag, the MAJX, the Mags, and then the T Mag, and this is more suited for more shots. So, like the range of them is relatively simple. Like the early weapon range is only 200, and but this has a reduced range. This has same range, it's just increasing damage. And then this one is increasing shots, so you can kind of diff them. I like to mix up between that and that, it just kind of depends on what the soldiers can do, and there is a reason for it. So you get your anti-tank lancers, now this is pretty simple, you either go for anti-tank, or you go for a mortar, pretty simple. The, the aim on them is D, but you see how much damage that does by summer. You can hit people with these, uh, if you do it does X amount of damage, like that one. That says area underneath, that means that if it hits it will affect an area of land as opposed to just one target. Uh, sniper rifles are pretty simple. Long range, that like thousand range. <coughs> this one is more suited for uh, damage. This is suited for range and accuracy and this is suited for special effect. Uh, anybody who gets hit by this has worth aim. It's pretty straightforward. That that range and that weapon is incredibly good. 1,500. Now range does come into effect because if you reach certain range then it's not going to do anything. Flamethrowers. The aim isn't really of matter. It's an area of effect weapon. It's range 90 means you have to be really close to them. But they do a lot of damage and that one actually reduces the target's HP. Uh, the grenades are just straightforward. Area of effect. X amount of range and so forth and move back to here but there is also the uh, shamrock now with the shamrock there are a variety of enhancements <clears throat> so that increases the actual health it has on the body and that increases how much defense it has on the body now two different things i can't i don't know how it works exactly but i know that the defense somewhat negates the damage that's taken from it, but I'm not entirely sure on how it works. Um, and the HP is what's taken off. That's how I would assume it works. Uh, but like on this, 
there are different things. So this is the anti-armor rounds, which give an increased damage to persons, but give an increased damage to armor. Then you get the increased payload, which is a uh, mortar upgrade, and we'll get into that a bit later. <coughs> which has increased damage against person, and increased damage against armor, and I believe that's an increased blast radius. Then we get the enhanced machine gun, which is more damage versus persons, and a bit more damage versus armor. I don't know what that one is. Uh, but the, the shamrock can actually have different weapons equipped on it. So you could have the main tank gun, or you could have a machine gun, or well, I think it's a Gatling gun. And basically what that does is that just increases the amount of damage per person. Or you can get a flamethrower on it, which increases damage per person a bit versus armor. You can do damage versus armor, but very limited. These bits are quite simple, because you see, um, with these, it's quite straightforward. Uh, but these, they say block size, and we'll get into that in a second. But this increases tread HP. So tanks have two bars, the tread and the body. The treads are, if they lose all health, then the vehicle is very slow. It, it can barely move. The body loses all health to the tank's done for. It's, it's blown up. Um, these increase the tread defense, and these increase the critical defense, which we'll move on to at a later point. <coughs> And this is for accuracy, and this increases the amount of uh, certain rounds that you can get, but we'll get into that at the end. Um, so then you get the Eagle Vice, which has body enhancements. So then we get a better gun, that increases the range, the distance the shell can go, you know, how much damage it will do, uh, that's the mortar, the machine gun, then it does range again, then it's the actual gun. That is how much damage it will do to the armor. So that's the uh, the machine gun, by the way. Uh, where it says heavy tank gun, that's the um, the machine gun on the the coaxial machine gun. That's the actual main gun. <clears throat> that's the mortar, and then I don't know what these other ones are. But then you get an interesting part, which is the additional armor rivet construction, and these do actually change the way the tank looks. So then you'll get reinforced body, uh, so that will actually give more defense to treads, more tread HP, more AP, that's quite an interesting part that we'll get into at a later point, and more body health. And then same thing, more body health, and then more body health, and I, I'm assuming this last one's going to be more body health. And then frontal armor just increases defense, uh, they do actually change the way it looks, so it says like frontal armor, increased defense, roll to steel, and then turret armor, you actually see it has in different turret armor on it. Um, then we move back onto the blocks bit that we'll move we'll get to in a second. Uh, so these just like increase in tread defense, increase in critical defense, and so on and so forth. Um, now it says outfit tanks, this is where we change things on it. So the shamrock. Uh, you just change which weapon it has, the E signifies what it's got equipped. Pardon me. <coughs> so it says BHP stands for body health, THP, tread health, and AP is action points, is what they stand for. So you get different weapons, the, uh, the aim on the anti-armor gun is E, which is really bad. Uh, then you get the Gatlin, which is C, and then the plane for B, so you can kind of see where it goes. That's for tanks, that's for, uh, well, I'd say that's more suited to personnel, so to say, because it does like 40 damage per person, but it depends on how much health the person has. And then you get that, which is a lot of damage versus a person. Uh, but you have to be very, as you see where these, the ranges do differ. The range is how far it can actually reach. So with the anti-armor shells, you can fire them nine amount, uh, 900. I don't actually know how far a range is, but... It's got to be so far. Okay, it's quite interesting. So you see, it has a block. Um, this is actually the E device. I'm just going to go into the shamrock quickly. Uh, so you see, the shamrock only is different in size. Now, there are certain limitations. You can only fit things in like X amount of space. So the steel alloy plate increases critical defense. Now what critical defense is, <coughs> uh, 
is the weak point. Every tank has a weak point. Uh, and the critical defence is the actual damage reduction. I believe that's how it works, but I don't really know fully. Um, so this increases tread HP, this increases tread defence, tread defence again, uh, critical defence, this increases aim, extra magazine, it yeah, gives you more and more ammo to your mortar, because mortars work off the basis that you only have a set amount of ammo and then it gets slowly replenished over the turns, because it is turn based. And this is another accuracy thing. Um, then we move on to the device, and that's kind of those mainly. I, I focus on aim, in all honesty, because I try to keep my tank out of the action. Uh, I use it as more of a fire support type of thing. This is the enhanced block pin, that does a huge amount of uh, reinforcement on it. So it gives treads a huge amount of defense, but I don't really worry about that because it's not really a big deal. Um, see, these increase the actual like the uh, the armor uh, so the turret magazine actually increases the ammo by three whereas that one only increases it by one I believe hang on let me just take these off oh, wait. so I'll, I'll actually just go about showing like how different bits work I should do on the evil piece it's a shame there's not a button to so just get rid of all of it but <clears throat> oh my gosh. So the way so this is what you get, you get a blank cam, a set amount of blocks, and you have to fit everything in in a certain manner. It's quite an interesting way of doing it. And I think it does work, because it makes you have to actually think about how you want to put stuff in, you have to put them in a certain thing. So say I wanted a lot of tread HP, just put that in, there you go. 400 tread HP, but then I might think, hmm, actually I want a bit more tread HP, so then I'll just, just get this bit and put in a bit more. And then go, well, yeah, I could always do with a bit more. There you go, I now have 1,625 tread HP. So... Uh, you see it does change at the top, so when I take it out and then tread HP. Now by default it is <coughs> 950, so yeah, put it up to a thousand of that, put it up to X amount, yeah, X amount. Um, however I might think, well, maybe I want a lot of tread defence. So you put in all of that and then you have 240 tread defense. That's quite a lot. So that means that like 240 HP won't be knocked off as far as I'm aware of how it works. And it's not a bad thing. Like increasing the health or increasing the defense or doing a bit of both. How the fuck did that? Oh yeah, yeah, the the it does have uh, controller support, but it's quite weird because if you press like left or right right again and left I think it goes through like the page so you see double coil and if I got one that's where double coil is there you go. um so you, it's number times it's been like that um but there are other things like critical defense <clears throat> and the accuracy and the ammunition so with the accuracy I'm just put that in and put in a periscope Put a monocle, go like there. Rotating periscope, go like there. That's not what I want. You have to put them in, in like a certain manner if you want it to really work. So that's got like maximum accuracy. So you see, that's kind of, it's kind of, you, I can't fit that in. Whereas I did before, so we just take that off. The accuracy was only plus 60, but I feel it does matter, the accuracy. So then let's say, well, I want to put in, so this gives me plus 1, this gives me plus 1, this gives me plus 2. 
So I'll put that in there. And then I'll put in the firing calculator there. And then I'll put in the bulletproof visor there. Oh, I might want to put in the periscope there. Monocle sight there. I can't fit in the rotating periscope, but I can fit in another ammunition thing. So I can put that in there. Or I could just use this one. So that increases it to three, and I've still got that one little space, so I might want to, I don't know, increase my critical defence by just a little bit. So it does all actually add up in the end. Um, now, <coughs> sorry about that. I might not want it to be like that, so if I can find... Yeah, that'll do. Oh, no, didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> so I might want to not actually worry about the critical defence. So I'll just move the critical defence. Then I might move this one down. Then I might move... Oh, I've forgotten what I was going to do now. No, oops. <laughs> It's quite hard when you're not actually looking at the thing, you're just looking at the uh, the box. Yeah, and if I put it there, I can actually fit in another, like, another 2-bit one. So, if I can find an example of it. No, no, there we go. So I might get a bit more tread HP. It depends on how you place things in, but I'm just going to go with my... Uh, see. Just trying to find something to fit in now. I've completely forgotten what I actually had in the, uh, the point. I think I'll just go there. There you go. You got a bit critical defense. So on and so forth. But yeah, we'll exit the R and D. Come back in Just gonna skip for it's talking. Um then we move to the training field which is basically where you increase soldiers level and skill. So Trade up I believe the maximum is twenty. Now the way it works is you kind of like put up points and it doesn't actually do anything unless you reach the max. So I'm not even going to bother just putting things in. Um, but it says I need 6, 61,314 to get to the next point, and I've only got 20. So if I did skirmishes, which is a good way to level up soldiers, whereas this, one, this one's only like 41,000, and they do differ depending on the thing. <coughs> Troopers are the most, but... To be honest, they can be incredibly useful. However, scouts are kind of what you're going to be relying on more if you play it a certain way. So this is like potentials and so on and so forth. Intrigue? Oh yeah, that's because they're an engineer. Um, as you know, they do have different bits, but we'll get into that in a minute. So when they reach a certain level, they will receive certain... Uh, they'll receive additional perks, which we'll go on to when we get over to the, uh, to the barracks. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The command room is where you actually select members, so... Hello. Oh! Been some new recruits. Interesting. Oh, I have a new recruit. I have Audrey. Intriguing. I don't remember ever getting her. Oh, how cute. Uh, but you only have a set amount of people you can have. How the hell did I manage to buy her? I only have her as a new one. I must have done something. So the way they work is relatively straightforward. You get different characters. So we'll get rid of... Get rid of Niles. That was good. Be sick. They do say things. Interesting. We'll get Audrey in, who's the new one. Hi, my name's Audrey Haitinga, and you were totally my inspiration for enlisting, sir. Okay. That's quite interesting. How very peculiar. Um, so, 
come. Now, they do have different kind of personalities, so to say. So again, it's squad barracks. Let me have a look at the members. Uh, these are the people we have in our squad. So we can deploy these lot. Now, you can only have 10 people on the field, and two of them are going to be these two. Well, him for definite. He usually does get deployed as well. Um, and it's advice, and I would advise, you deploy her, her, and him. Because they give you additional command points, which we'll get into at a later point. So you get different type of soldiers, and we'll have a look at the newbie here, Audrey. <clears throat> so she has a rocket launcher. Now, these are some enemy rocket launchers that I acquired over time, as you see them. They're different. Uh, we'll just stick with this, the normal one. Um, this is a, I believe that one is the, oh, what's it called? Oh, it's, uh, the, the R stands for, I can't, it's on the, the monarchy thing, royal, that's it. I think that's what it stands for, it's a royal variant. Uh, this is an enemy one. I believe this is a, um, just a normal, really bad one. I can't remember though. I think it is. It's a VBPL, VB. Yeah, well, we're going to say it is. It has a lot of accuracy, though, to be fair, and it's got a lot of range, So, but it does less damage. It depends on what you did is necessary, so you could go with that. But it depends on how you want to play them. Um, now, there we go. So, they have different bonuses to them. So, pollen allergy is... These are kind of the personality traits. And these are the... Uh, Combat traits, shall we say? So first aid boost, the healing powers of Ragnide, which is the medical thing that every soldier has in this game. Um, the healing powers are sometimes increased, so if it's triggered, it gets increased. I don't believe there is any set trigger. Um, tank Slayer, when two or more tanks, when near two or more tanks, they receive a boost to attack related parameters. So they do more damage to a tank. Oh, that's actually pretty useful. Wow, and poison tolerance, an acquired tolerance of toxin renders them immune to status elements. Wow, that's, that's really useful. Bloody hell. Um, now, pollen allergy is... Heavy pollen allergies mean a steady drain of HP when standing near too much plant life. You do get that, and it can trigger. It just means it slowly deteriorates your health. Um, Good buddy, being around close friends make them even better and a little cheerier boosting their attack power. Boost the attack power and camaraderie. I can't I don't know how you pronounce that word. Uh, having allies of the same unit class nearby puts them at ease raising their natural evasion. So there are different facts. There's defense, evasion, attack and accuracy, I would say, and health. They're kind of the bits that like you focused on. Um there is information about each one of them, so... Actually, no, we've we'll got back into the barracks quickly. So, you do get, uh... Actually, no, no, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm meant to get the... No! Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> this game is a port. I wouldn't say it's a bad one, actually. The controls do work pretty well, to be honest. Um... Yes. Okay, uh, so say we're just going to remove... You can't remove Alicia, and you can't remove Rosie, and you can't remove Lago. There's a reason for that. <laughs> so we're just going to... Uh, let's say... Different people do have different personalities. So we just, we'll remove Melvin for the time being. I'll never forget you guys, Wilkman. Just say the... Let's see, and then... So there's like... Each one of them has different traits to them, so you can get, well they do have different personalities, a lot of women, what's mine made of, a lot of men, I suppose, balance them, more women, a lot of, a lot of women, um, so we'll go with, which one you find? Uh, I really wish I could see the other. You can see like other bits to them, but it's quite interesting. And the likes bit does sometimes play use depending on what they are. So, 
for example, we'll go back to Mon <laughs> uh, not Monty, Melvin, sorry. Hey Welchter, I'm Melville Young. I'll do my best, man. So, they do have like things, but then if I get rid of them, like, it only triggers once every time you load it up. So Desert Allergy, Chatty Cathy, Troop Killer, and Energetic. So, they're his personality things. Uh, Ted's is Metal Allergy, Fancies Men, Fancies Women, Show Off. You get Alicia, who is Country Bread, Maternal, Mysterious Body, and Valkyria. There's... I did warn spoiler alert early on. Valkyria, that's the spoiler alert. Um, and you see it says likes, Welkin, Noose, and Dallas. Uh... His likes are Alex, Nina, and Ted. I've got Ted, so. But the problem is, Chatty Cathy. Whenever close to a friend, whenever a close friend is nearby, they just can't help but chit chat. Distraction that lowers their accuracy. So I can't really use him alongside Ted, or where, well, I can't use him close to Ted. The thing is, Ted is actually I like Ted because he has these. Having men nearby makes them happy, leading to enhanced accuracy when firing. Having women around makes them want to look good, making them shoot with greater accuracy. Being sighted by multiple enemies makes them want to show off upping their defence. He's got quite a lot of good bonuses to him. Metal allergy is not really something you worry about, because it's very rare that you come across it, and there's only certain maps that it comes across. Pollen allergy is kind of a bit of a more annoying one, but it's something that can easily just be countered against. Um, so the show-off one is actually really useful, because upping their defence, he's a scout, scout's a pretty poor defence. Wavy is a Darson. Now, this, having brethren close by, stirs enhanced defence, uh, to oh, having brethren close by, oh, gosh. Having brethren close by to protect, stirs enhanced defensive abilities, which means his defence increases if he's with another Darson. Um... Like, improved defense, spent on, like, better evasion. Dirt is kind of an annoying thing, but decrease in accuracy. Scouts are quick, you don't need to really worry about them. Susie, the reason I've got her, I don't know. Why have I got her? It's quite a weird thing, actually. I, I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I have her. Ica, she's really good. I love using her, she's so fun. Um, because, good buddy boosting their attack power and run as high which increases defense so you just keep on doing it so they have less than half AP uh, it does, I don't believe it always triggers but it can I think it can trigger pollen allergy is not really something you worry about and VC Yoko and Dallas now the thing is as stated before like um, like they have like so Zaka and Nadine now the thing about Zaka is he is a Darson and Nadine who I should also have is a Darson it's kind of the uh, the point about it. Like she also has Darson Bond, so and camaraderie, rear guard, and pollen allergy. Now there is an interesting one, Lynn. She is also a Darson. Um, she likes Zaka and Carl. Now the thing about Carl is, uh, he's not a Darson, but he is. You're probably thinking, well, why the hell would you use Carl? He's he only gets boosted by metal which he, there's barely any on the map. He When he's alone, he loses evasion, and when he encounters the enemy, he can't even evade. It's like, so why would you use that? Well, certain characters are triggered under certain circumstances. And I've just remembered that Audrey is triggered by doing something. That's how you acquire some of them. Most of them it's just story progression, but Emil, you trigger him uh, through like different like things that each one of them is triggered under certain circumstances well not each one of them but some of them are uh, I like using Darsons because I'm not racist <laughs> um, it's like dirt stains but night vision that's useful on dark maps and scout killer is very useful if you get something that says killer on it you'll want to use it um, some characters are incredibly powerful example A Alicia Melchior She's just really good to use, but she's a story character, so you don't really have a choice about it either way. Ica's useful to use. Um, I'd say Alex is pretty useful to use. Vise is useful to use because of like the child of nature. It's a bit of a problem thing, 
but it doesn't always matter. You don't have to use them. You can. And the Born Leader thing is very useful for defence. Challenge Lover. Charging into the face of an enemy fire creates a rush of adrenaline that enhances attack power. So you fire, you charge him at an enemy, he will do more damage to them. Lin is uh, one of the best, I would say. She has such a... We'll get into why she's incredibly good. So Child of Nature is just a thing. You know, you don't have to use her on dirt maps. But on the... Uh, city maps, you can if you want, um, and that only actually applies if they're on the road, like it says paved road, so you can just keep them on grass. Dart and Bond, Trooper Killer, so the confidence that they can best any shock trooper grants a boost in attack abilities, and this is what makes her like incredibly powerful, that hard worker thing, a disciplined worth ethic that occasionally enables them to take a second attack action after attacking. What that means is, is that when you're using Lin, you might uh, run up to an enemy, shoot them, and they might still be alive. And then if that triggers, then it will just go, oh, I can use the second thing. So you can just shoot them again. And she's incredibly powerful. I use this character because she's quite funny, in all honesty. Like, she has... Um, that's really, really annoying. Charging into the face of the enemy makes them panic, decreasing attack power. She's a trooper. She only has so much she can do. She hates Rosie. Um, cause, <laughs> having Rosie around is a drag, causing a drop in attack power. And a born leader. That's quite a weird one. Uh, this is another really dangerous, like really... I'd say this character is somewhat OP. Imp Hater. So basically, pure hatred for the Empire yields a boost in accuracy. So in a nutshell, what that means is, if you're doing the vast majority of missions, she hates, she'll hate the enemy, like, with a passion. So, increased accuracy, Lancer Killer, which are the heaviest defended, who have the, the heaviest defense, she'll go up against them, and Sadist, which is even more interesting, because it's just... Inflicting pain on others fills them with sublime sense of pleasure, upping anti-personnel attack power. It's quite interesting when you actually read the backstory to some of the characters. Um, I should probably also mention, that was triggered by a assignment, not assignment, article, I believe it is. Is it an article? I think it's what it's referred to as. An article, Veggie Magnet. Um, he's also quite a good character to use, uh, like big hearted. You know, he can revive after his HP reaches zero, which means that if he just falls to the ground, we'll use quotation marks and say dead, because he can be revived, he might just get straight back up. Um, loyal teammate, it's a good one, enjoying a boost in abilities. I think that affects everything, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, child of nature, it's just, child of nature is quite a common one. Um, we're going to have to, just because you'll understand what it means when it says, like, well, Pollen Allergy, Largo Lover, and Fancy's Men. Oh, I'm going to miss you to death. You give me a call any old time, honey. He's a very interesting character, Jan. Um, he's probably the best Lancer, in my opinion. Not because of... Hey, soldier. I'm Jan Walker. I'll fight with everything I've got. He's incredibly useful because of the fact that he's a Largo lover and fancies men. Most missions I will deploy Largo, and if I have a second AT, it will usually be him because it's the fancies men. So you can trigger the increase in accuracy and the attack power, but there's also more to him than meets the eye. These are only personality traits, you've also got the other bits. So, like, um, to get Nadine, she's got the, the rear guard, which is, you use her last. Now, I don't really use Engineer's Law, so that part isn't really important, but that's useful, and that is useful. Zaka is a tanker, so if she's close to a tank, then she'll sometimes get a boost. <laughs> Meadow Bread is basically the same as Child of Nature, except for it only has a positive effect as opposed to a negative effect. So, increasing defense on grassy fields. But this one is one of the more annoying facts. He, he, he 
if you make them go lower than a uh, AP, it's a decrease in defense. And they're sniper. Sniper have really poor defense, so it's quite an important thing you remember some of these. Good buddy, you know, close friends around, and never say die. When HP reaches a single digit, their warrior spirit burns brightest, granting raised accuracy. I wouldn't really say that one's useful because it has its place, but it's not really on the battlefield, shall we say. I've never really found it to be of use. So, Meadow Bread again, Imp Hater, so boost in accuracy, Night Vision, increased accuracy at night, and Coward, which means worst accuracy when enemies are nearby. That is completely negligible. They're a sniper. Snipers have long range for a reason. Now, this is one of the more interesting characters. Marina Walshstan. She has a pollen allergy, which is, you know, a pollen allergy. Just reduces HP over time. <laughs> if near pollen. Uh, night vision, increased accuracy at night. Lone Wolf, having allies nearby is a distraction that causes them to drop in evasion ability. Now you're probably thinking, why would you want to use them? They're a sniper, and they have really poor defense, so they're not even going to be able to evade if near and allies. Uh, my way, having no allies nearby makes them think clearly, improving their evasion. She is probably the best sniper. And the thing about snipers are, they fight from long range. Other characters have to get a bit closer. So, snipers can be kept at nine at the back of the map, without a problem. Um, there are other characters, of course. Each one of them does have their own backstory. And we'll go over them, well, pretty much now. So, let's return to the thing. A squad barracks, you can change weapons, as shown. So it says, personnel tab has been updated. You go to the personnel tab, and it will just show off there. Audrey has been added as a, a new person. Using characters can help you uh, find out more information about them. So this is Alex. Oops, didn't mean to care. This is Alex. He's a shock trooper. Um, his leap before you look, brashness, and fighty carefree nature have earned him the name Bird among his friends in the squad. Nothing to do with his hair. <laughs> it's quite a carefree hair uh, hairstyle as well. You can get Kevin. You know. Skittish and introvert, you found interaction more difficult. Uh, some of them are quite odd. So, Kobe, uh, a foreman for a carpentry company before he joined the militia. His bad back is a result of an injury he suffered during the First European War. Now, I feel personally, what they could have done is had like a veteran. So, because there are, so you do get, he's not the only one that's a veteran of the First War, there are others. One of them being Largo. Largo was in the first war. I feel like they should have given that as a bonus, like veteran, so done something with it. Um, you can always see that they do differ. No, they do have different backstories. Born in a richly wooded part of southern Gallo, he enlisted immediately upon hearing his hometown was in the path of danger. Mika, a warrior and a perfectionist, he lets even minor details get to him, making him tiresome company, but a skilled machinist. Um, even though he's a shock trooper, he's like, oh, oh. Vis Inglebard, I can't remember what the game's called, but he's from it, it's, um, I think it's like, he's from a different game. Uh, I, th I think it's Skies of Arcadia, I believe, I don't know what it's called, um, like I said, together with Akia, he roams the globe seeking adventure. Rumour has it he hails from a nation far removed from Europa's shores. Bleak circumstances only excite him all the more, and luckily he has an iron will to see him to see him through. Once he starts talking about the sky, he doesn't stop. I believe it's Skies of Arcadia, but I'm not entirely sure. So he's like an interesting character because he's not even from the game. <laughs> Lynn? A Darson, she was hiding for fear of Imperial Hunters until her, till news that her lover, Carl, was in danger. This drove her to enlist. Though un unaccustomed to firearms, Carl's instruction paired with her Darson work ethic saw her skills grow in leaps and bounds within a short period of time. She's incredibly powerful. Um, and the way you get her is if Carl gets injured, to the point where he has to be, like, pulled out. Then you get her. It's one of those weird ones. Uh, she's an explosives pro, uh, well she's like, explosives maniac. 
don't know what that's called. There's, there's probably a name for it somewhere. Edie Nelson or Eddie Nelson. As a self-proclaimed actress, growing up in a tiny rural town, she was quite starlet, though proud she lacks coping skills. Unable to forgive anyone who draws public eye away from her, she feels a strong and one-sided sense of rivalry against Rosie, the squad's top trooper. Uh, she's 12, this character is, by the way. 12. Just remember that. Uh, this is the funny one. A florist in brawl until the Imperial invasion destroyed her shop. Ever since, she has forested a deep hatred for the Empire. Any hesitation she may have felt on the battlefield soon gave way to feelings of pleasure at defeating Imperials. She began to take the front lines by choice. So this person's story background was that they were a florist. Somebody's uh, the Imperial invasion uh, forces destroyed her shop, and it just made her really angry. Any other ones, you know? Um, her family ran an ironworks factory in Fosen. Uh, her belief it, that a sound body saves lives and motivates her to train physically daily. You know, it's different. Each one of them has different traits to them. You do, I believe you gain more information about them by... Uh, how to put it? Uh, you gain more information about them by uh, using them, and not like doing certain things with them. <laughs> His greatest love was always making others laugh, and then if you read the bottom bit, despite countless attempts, he has yet to make Marina laugh, even once. Uh, Wavy. Uh, Darsons only have the first name, they don't have a last name, so it's, it's another thing to keep an eye out for. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Montley. Uh, I keep burping. He's a team captain in Brawl. Uh, he also has a bad back. I don't know why though. Um, you get Nancy, Ramona, Susie. She was a brawl as well. Um, Freesia, <laughs> Juno, Cherry, Ica, along with which comes with Veek. Uh, Veek, sorry. Jan Walk, uh, Walker, Squad 7 Lancer, age 27. Muscles send him to the moon, whether they be his own or those of other gents in the squad. His little sneezes are just adorable. A mother hen by nature, he worked as a babysitter before enlisting. Since then, he has bruised himself preparing meals and baking treats for his crush, Largo. If you hadn't a guest, we'll, we'll refer to him as a confirmed bachelor. And if you know what that means, it means he's gay. Um, he's homosexual. Uh... Niels, he is, I believe he's like, why is it, is this the person I'm thinking of? Da -da 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 yeah, yeah, he's basically a criminal. <laughs> he's, a, he's a, oh, what's it called? Like a criminal leader type of thing? I forgot, I forgot what it's a gang leader, so I can't remember what it is. Um, you can see, you do get quite a few of them. You get Walter, Hector, Hector's pretty badass, just in looks and all honesty. Audrey. After hearing Wilkins' exploits, she travelled to the capital with stars in her eyes. She has a tendency to get swept up in trends. Oh, what is it? I think it's like a chief ten medals. I think that's what it is to acquire her. I think that's how I got her. Um, Racina, Yoko. She's an EW1, a veteran, I believe. She ran a world. Oh, I don't know. I believe she did. Elise. Uh, you get Newt. I think that's how it's pronounced, Newt, John. Um, if you save up a lot of money, you'll get him. Uh, just normal one. Carl, he's what you need to get Lynn. Uh, Homer. Some of these characters do actually play a part in later Valkyria Chronicles games. Like the second one, I believe you can get Edie Nelson's younger sister. And in the third one, one of the characters is Homer's older sister. Uh, you get Dallas. Um, Ramsey. Nadine. Another Darson. Claudia. The unlucky girl. Yeah. Naturally cursed with terrible luck. She found nothing but trouble any time she left home. She tried never leaving, but soon lost 
even that safe haven. I believe it, yeah. Her life as a homebody ended when a stray tank shell demolished her house. Uh, Emil, you get him when Oscar gets taken out. Well, not taken out, type of thing, but knocked down. Cersei Red Regard, I don't... I don't know, she's not really one of the better snipers, unfortunately. Um, so you can, he's kind of a lazy one. Uh, Marina, the best sniper. Like, despising other people interfering with her life above all else, she prefers to be alone. Though a single guy can send him packings, then uh, Ted still tries to chat. So it's quite a funny one. Uh, She's an animal lover as well. I think it states there, doesn't it? Trained in a... No. Uh, father is skilled. That doesn't say. She's an animal lover. Catherine is an EW1 veteran, as it says at the top. So I, I feel like there should have been some bonuses. I believe she's the only one that can't achieve 100% accuracy. I don't know what. But... Uh, Squad 7 Medic. Actually, a set of triplets named Mina, Gina and Fina, all of whom are currently militia medics. They are off <laughs> seen socialising with Visa and Ica. And then you get back to the enemies. Um, now, what I'm going to do is this is the first part, and there'll be a second part where I just go through maybe one or two skirmishes just to show off what they're like. So I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to, stay, part, stay tuned for part two.